So good evening, everybody. Like I was just saying then, before we kind of went live officially, it's uh, Tuesday night tonight. Normally we go live every Monday night, 9 p.m. UK time. Tonight's uh, same time, just a different day. And that was because my voiceover agent, really cool event actually. Um, my voiceover agent was running an event last night. She does, uh, this is one of my, one of the agents within the voiceover gallery, the agency that, that are my voiceover agents. Um, Jude runs a night called 10 by 9. And that's T E N, the number 10, obviously. X, as in by, and then the number 9. So T E N, X9, basically. 10 by 9. What it is, is nine people stand up, and it's like an open mic night for storytelling. Stand up and tell a story, true story from their life, an experience from their life, and based around a theme. Um, there's been a few themes. One was courage, uh, one was a gift. Uh, last night was second chances, and it was amazing. Um, hearing how people feel they've got a second chance at life for whatever reason. One guy stood up when they did this little open mic session where it's someone who hasn't like, you know, already pre-planned of doing a story and said, do you want to, uh, anyone want to, want to tell a story about a second chance? This guy stood up and went, listen, I wasn't supposed to be here. Like, you know, I just, I came into this place tonight. It's like a cafe bookshop place called Chapter One Books in Manchester. Just came in for a, uh, you know, to read. And then I saw this event on, I just listened to some of the stories tonight and it's really inspired me. Um, there was like doctors telling about how they're giving second chances to people when they, one guy brought a woman back to life in the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Slightly extreme. Um, but this guy said, listen, I was, um, I was working on Market Street in Manchester. He said I was on my break a couple of years ago and I was a victim of an unprovoked attack. A guy just came up to me and stabbed me. Like just some guy completely off his head on some substance. Um, put him in a coma for two weeks, completely transformed his life, gave him a second chance. Um, the doctor saved his life. Um, that guy's now like, you know, just it's completely changed his life. Um, he's a bit of a motivational kind of speaker, uh, very much into positive psychology, but he was hit hard again um, shortly after his recovery. Um, his mum got cancer um, and then three months later died. So this guy's been like bang, bang, um, hitting life's just punched him in the face twice, but he's come back from it. Um, he's spawned advantage from that adversity and now he's he, the guy just like so charismatic um, and just like just gives off this in incredible like aura of, of positivity um, so if you're focusing on some dumb shit right now in your life ultimately that was the point of me telling you that um, don't it's pointless you're going to die one day you're going to be dead a lot longer than you're alive uh, please stop focusing on on nonsense um, so yeah <laughs> little uh little preach at the start of the evening. Wendy's here already. All right, Wendy. Lee's in the house as well. Thanks, Leaf. Join us. I said hello to Paul. Um, email brought me here. Nice one, Paul. The little emails I'm sending out to sort of jog people's memories that were going live is uh, obviously working. Gemma's here. Good evening, Gemma. I've said hello to John, Sophia, Jamie, Stu. Um, those who are listening on the audio experience um, or if you're listening on Spotify, listening on iTunes, you're watching on the replay on YouTube, um, come and join us live. Normally, it's Monday nights. Like I say, tonight's Tuesday night. Um, so um, I've got a few things to play for you tonight, guys. And and then we're just going to have a chat. This is just like a, a bit of an open sort of Q&A, really. We can talk about whatever you want. Um, Jorm is in the house. All right, man. Yes, no one gets out alive. Focus on the great. Exactly. My sentiments precisely. Um, I put a podcast out um, talking about kind of like second chances um, and turning negatives into positives. Put a podcast out yesterday with a director called Phil Beastel. Um, anyone here already listened to that? Because I'm going to play you a little clip from it. Um, it's a podcast on atsonthis.tv. If you're a premium member, you'll, it'll be in the members area for you right now. If you're not a premium member, you can listen to a 10-minute preview of it on the site. Um, in fact, I'll go over to the site. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you where it is, what Phil, uh, what Phil looks like. Uh, if you go over here, so if you go to the main site, atsonthis.tv, and then just click on what's new in the top right-hand corner there, Obviously, you're going to see what's new. <laughs> you're going to see what's new on the site. It's this podcast literally went out yesterday, Taking Control of Your Creativity with viral filmmaker Phil Beastel. Um, you can listen to a 10-minute preview of it there. If you've not got a premium membership, um, just get one. It's £2.50 a week. You know, what are you doing with your life? Get involved. You listen to hundreds of hours worth of like incredible podcasts with incredible people in the industry who are really going to help you take your acting career for, um, you know, much further, much faster. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't know if you know the story behind Phil. He was a uh, a bit of a frustrated filmmaker for many years. He made a film in 2014 called Love is a Gift, right? Now, this film, I'm going to play you tonight if you haven't seen it. I'm just going to play it. It's only a short film. It's only a few minutes long, um, but it will give you context for what I'm going to talk about as well. 
taking control of your own creativity as an actor. He's a director, but it's the same game. It's exactly the same game. As a director, you can just sit there waiting for jobs to come in and do nothing with your life and die. Um, as an actor, you can sit there waiting for jobs to come in and do nothing with your life and die. And Phil decided in 2014 he wasn't going to do that. He was going to take control of his creativity and make the short film. Now, he put it out in 2014 and it got a little bit of traction in his hometown like you know you know you have like lo these local facebook pages i've got one for where i live in in manchester m41 as it's called it's the most negative uh <laughs> page i've ever seen in my life just people complaining about everything they take photographs of bins with like dog poo in and then complain the council's not emptying the bins. Um, so he didn't get the kind of fame that he wanted from the film. It was on those local kind of pages where people were sharing it. Um, and he had some patience, though. He went, you know what, I'm going to put it out in 2015. Again, it got nowhere. 2016 got nowhere. 2017 got nowhere. But he really freaking believed in this film. He said to me in this podcast, he said, I knew. He said, you know, if anyone asked me what's the best thing I've ever made, he said, I knew I would always say it's that regardless of how you know well or not well it ages the story that he told he was so proud of he said you know obviously as every year went by technology got better so this film looked older um compared to what other people were putting out but he just knew the story was really good now in 2018 he wasn't going to put it out again he actually was going to make something else and he didn't have time to make it so he was frustrated as hell and went oh i've got nothing else to put out i'm going to put this out one more time what happened from that point? All right, Lewis Bray in the house, how are you doing, man? What happened from that point was phenomenal. Um, it went massively viral. 70 million people watched it and shared it across social media over Christmas 2018. This was the guy who like thought that film was not really ever going to do anything. Four years after he made it, he was still plugging it, thinking he was going to get nowhere, but he's still, you know, he, oh, down in the bottom of his, back of his mind, he, he knew it had potential. Um, 70 million people watched it. He got him on every single um, breakfast TV show in the UK, on television, lots of primetime shows. Everyone wanted interviews with him, including myself. Um, I got one with him this week, went around to his house, well, his mum and dad's house. We recorded a, a great podcast, an hour and a half podcast. Like I said, you can get on ads on this.tv. Uh, but there's some just really, really important messages in there about not giving up ultimately. Um, and then Phil's now gone on to, he just directed a music video for a great artist called Lewis Capaldi. No relation to Peter Capaldi, although Peter Capaldi is in the video. Um, that's now at number three in the UK singles chart. Um, it's basically sold out Lewis's tour off the back of that, that song and that video, a fantastic song called Someone You Loved. Um, check that out as well. But Phil is like the master of emotional storytelling and viral video at the end of the day. And I think the reason it goes viral is because when you can tell them a story emotionally and really touch somebody, um, it, something magical happens. I'm going to play you this. Who's seen it? I'll just play it you. Uh, Phil won't mind me broad broadcasting it on the internet, I don't think. Um, but let me know if you've seen it already. So Wendy says, oh, yes, yeah, saw this. So Wendy's seen it. Uh, he's a friend of the woman who directed the film I was in last year. Ah, no way. Gemma says, yes, yeah, saw this. So emotional. Um, Paul says, just goes to show timing can be crucial. Honestly, Paul, done it, man. This is what I mean. Like sometimes you can have the right product at the at the wrong time, and I think you know, I think a lot of actors, they are the product, right? We are we're, we're our product. That, that's it. And a lot of actors get very very despondent when stuff's not happening. And I'm sure you know I've seen it myself. I've just seen so many people give up just before they were about to pop, before something was going to happen. Um, sometimes they're dragged back in because Destiny's like, ah, ah, no, you're not going anywhere. I'm going to bring you back in. Other times, yeah, people, you know, the industry just kind of like let them go. And I just see a lot of super talented people um, quitting way too early. Um, Phil didn't do that. It wasn't to say he wasn't frustrated. He was frustrated as hell. You know, he had him. He said he, he said he struggled with imposter syndrome. He's like, actually, you know what? Who am I to say anyone would think my film's any good? Um, all the shit that we all struggle with or we all deal with, you know, and have to kind of fight on a daily basis. Um, I'll play you this video now. In fact, you know what? Before I do, I'm going to play you. I'm going to play you 60 seconds of the. Should I play? Oh, which way around should I play this? No, I'm not. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change my mind again. I'm gonna play the video first. So this is "Love Is a Gift" by Phil Beastel, made in 2014, and didn't pop till 2018. Now over 70 million people have watched and shared this film. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good evening, Gary. Just in time to watch "Love Is a Gift." It's not Christmas, 
Mark Hill's in the house as well, just in time to watch Love is a Gift, Mark. Um, but it might, yeah, it might not be as emotional because it's not Christmas, but God, if you've ever lost a parent, I still think you'll get it. Check it out and I'll be back soon. Hi Chris, it's Mum. Merry Christmas, Poppet. Another year has passed. I wanted to start this one by saying something I haven't said yet, which is thank you. Thank you for taking the time to remember me. After all these years, I can't believe you're going to be 30 soon. I wish I could be there to see how you've grown, to see what kind of man you've become. I know I would be so proud of you. So this is it, my last tape. I wish I could keep talking to you every Christmas, but it's time to say goodbye. Just remember how much I love you. Never forget that, okay? I will always be your mum. Before I go, let me tell you a story about the happiest day of my life, the day you were born. Oh God, I had to, I had to turn the audio off. <laughs> I had to turn the audio off. It was, get, it was getting too much. Such a short film, but so freaking like crazily powerful my mum calls you know i'm 36 she still calls me poppet sometimes as well i'm like oh god just like just resonates mary's in the house all right mary i saw you comment on uh on on a on the podcast before saying that is the best christmas uh advert ever um oh now wendy says literally sobbing now damn it um i should have said to those on the audio experience you wouldn't have like it's all it's all bar the speaking you're so there it's obviously all um video to to music so apologies if you just thought it was uh music for a while um uh, but yeah so so powerful and that's like I say phil's film there love is a gift it, it it didn't really do anything in 2014 didn't really do anything in 2015 all right peter nothing in 2016 2017 and then 2018 bang 70 million people so if you've got stuff that you've ultimately you know that you've recorded or you know what or you want to make you want to take creativity in your own hands as an actor and create your own stuff if you put it out there and people don't you know kind of like instantly share it and it doesn't instantly go incredibly viral and like you don't get millions and millions and millions of views and stuff like that um it doesn't matter you've got to operate from a place where one is better than zero every piece of content i put out every live broadcast i put out you know everything um I always operate from a place where one is better than zero. And it's like, and I did when I first started doing these live broadcasts. I don't, is anyone on here? He's been here like since, I've been doing these for probably like three or four years now. Um, do you know what I'm going to do for next Monday? I'm going to pull up the recording of my very first ever live broadcast where nobody watched. And I still presented it like this as if everyone was watching because <laughs> I thought, you know what? At least I'm going to have a replay. I'll just pretend people were there and then like maybe like people will watch it on the replay. Um, it doesn't matter. One is better than zero and you'll start off and if you can just get one, you don't know who that one view is going to be, you know, or if you can get 10 views on it. I know a lot of people and actors in the, in the community who have kind of 
maybe talk to enough about creating their own content where they've gone and done it and then they've been really disheartened when they put their first video out and it gets 10 views. And I'm like, what did you actually expect? Really, what did you actually expect? Um, you've got to love the game, fall in love with the process of creating it. I was talking to Rachel Shenton the other day who won the Oscar for The Silent Child last year. Um, and she was saying actually she's feeling quite frustrated recently because she isn't creating. And obviously it's just been the Oscars, so it was obviously on her mind that this time last year she had won one. Um, but she's like, she, you know, she's realised it's not about, and again, it's cliched and, you know, she can say it because she's won it. Um and you won't believe it until you've won it and you'll feel exactly the same though. It's not about that. It's not about that little gold statue on a mantelpiece. She doesn't really, you know, doesn't that doesn't fill you up. Um, it's the creative process. Same for me on, I've never won an Oscar, I'd like to, but <laughs> it's not everything. If I'm creating, I'm really happy. Whether that's writing a blog post, whether that's recording a podcast, whether that's uh, doing a live broadcast like this. Um, ultimately, where I'm making something that didn't exist before I decided to create it, that's what fills me up. Um, so just create. Anyone here like got anything in their head where they're like, look, I'd like to create something, but maybe I'm a bit scared. Let me uh, let me know what you're saying. Paul, I think I missed the start of the live broadcast, but I remember that's on this pretty soon after you launched. Yeah, because Paul, didn't you launch your theatre company around the same time? I think I remember. And you wrote me an article way back in the day, didn't you, about a show you did with Dave Spikey. I think that must have been like 10 years ago, mate. I'm sure that was you on it. I've got a good memory, I think, for, for faces in the uh, in the community. Julie says, really felt the emotion. My mum passed away when I was 22. Wow. Very powerful, definitely. Oh, Julie Frost. All right, Julie. Uh, I don't know you are. Um, yeah. No, it is, isn't it? It is. I just, like I say, God, I've seen it so many times. And even then, I was like, I'm just going to turn the, turn the sound down. I'm not going to watch it. You lot can watch it. And I just won't, uh, I won't listen to it, I mean. Um, Kevin Flanagan's in the house. Hi, from Dublin. All right, Kev. He's, Kev's a good lad. Thanks for joining us all the way from Dublin, man. Angie's in the house as well. Um, so, yeah, Angie, you just missed us playing Love is a Gift, Phil Beastle's um, short film that went viral over Christmas. I interviewed him this week. Um, I'm going to play you a little clip from the interview. It's only 60 seconds long. It's just something that I create for Instagram. Um, but, again, it's a powerful message from Phil about staying in the freaking game. He wanted to give up. Go and listen to this podcast, seriously. It's an hour and 20 odd minutes long, but we go really deep on lots of aspects of Phil's life. What I'm loving actually about the podcast on Ads on This Now um, is that they're not just about the acting industry. There's so much more than that. Lee Petch's in the house, all right, Lee. Um, they're much more than uh, just just chats about acting. I think it gets boring after a bit, doesn't it? Um, the last few that I've done, I've been much more than that. So there's Phil's there. Um, the one with uh, even the one with Alex Priestley, the agent. If you're looking for a great agent, um, Alex from uh, Alex Priestley uh, Talent, um, she's the head of the agency. Obviously, it's her agency. Um, even then, we talk all around the fears she had of setting up the agency. It's not just about like acting, it's about Phil Barantini's was deep, man. We talk about addiction, uh, in Phil's. Phil's just directed an awesome film with uh, Stephen Graham starring it called Boiling Point. He's going on to do a new film, um, with uh, Craig Fairbrass, I think. Um, doing some great stuff. But these are all like super in-depth chats. Asan Jai there from Emmerdale, um, he was telling us about the time just before he got Emmerdale where he had six quid to his name. He went into a shop, bought a fish and he had 50p left. He was hiding in train toilets to get to auditions in London with guards knocking on the door as he's trying to learn his script. Um, Julie Esmanaus talks about leaving Corrie and not a single agent wanting her. I mean, look how well she's done now, but not a single agent wanted her when she left Coronation Street. That's something people probably didn't know. We go really deep in all of these chats um, on that's on this. But the one with uh, with Phil there at the top, um, particularly, you know, if you're at a place where you're like, God, have I made the right decision going into something creative? Should I really be chasing an acting career? Should I really be doing this? You need to listen to that one. I'm going to play you like this 60 second clip just about staying in the game, basically. Um, this is Phil. This is uh, this is from this podcast. Just keep trying. I know it, it really will feel like you're you're struggling, um, and and sometimes you just want to pack it in. But just just keep reminding yourself of why you're doing it. Why did you first decide to get into this? And probably you'll realise it's because it's just something that you feel you have to do. But you just can't help but do it. But mostly, it, I would just stress how important it is to have a good attitude. But I would say that 
someone could have the best showrunner in the world, but if they are a dick to work yeah. with, then <laughs> I won't work with them. Simply that. But actually, if I was to, someone had no CV at all, but had the best attitude, I feel that I could develop them and would want to work with them, especially in the film industry. It's, it's such a great community. You end up being lumped with 50 people without knowing them at all sometimes. Yeah. And you've got to get on. You don't want to be remembered as the one that made it difficult for everybody else. Boom. So that's Phil's uh, opinion on attitude. He said, listen, man, attitude's everything, particularly where he's at in his career now. And he's, you know, he's, he's looking to discover new talent, new actors. Uh, we talk about that in the podcast. He's like, listen, I'm not selling out. Like, I've had some success now. He says, but, you know, I'm still all about working with people that I want to work with. Um, if you're super talented and you're a dick, like he says in that, in that little clip there, don't want to work with you. Um, but if you, you know, if you're not, and you do want to work with Phil, listen to that podcast and then tweet him at Phil Beastle. Let him know that you've, uh, you've heard it. You'll find out an awful lot about him. Um, and how he works in that podcast as well. Um, I'd love to do do something with him. The guy's just a genius when it comes to storytelling. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to talk about tonight, basically. Get yourself over. If you, if you want to get a free trial, by the way, if you're like, I don't know whether to sign up to Acts on This or not, I mean, you should do. But if you just want to try it out for seven days for nothing, actsonthis.tv forward slash seven days. The number seven forward slash seven days. Get a trial for seven days. You will have to put your card details in. I'll be completely transparent with you. Um, I'm not a con artist, not trying to get any money off you. If you just cancel it within seven days, that you can do yourself from the members area in one click. You don't have to ring me on a Tuesday afternoon at three till four, like some of these fucking services you get like, yeah, free trial. Just sign up. It's completely free. And you go, all right, brilliant. You put your card details in and they go, right, to cancel. Now you've got to ring us. There's a number in America on the Thursday afternoon between three and 4 p.m. Uh, none of that. You do it yourself, literally. No contacts with it whatsoever. Um, but to set up a trial, yeah, you do have to, you know, kind of like actually go through the checkout. Um, but if you cancel within seven days, you won't pay a single bloody thing. Get access to absolutely everything. You won't want to cancel, though. Um, some incredible stuff on there. Um, Louis says, yeah, inspired by The Silent Child, I've now written a film and a first meeting with producers tomorrow. Nice one, uh, Louis. Obviously, I'm going to be starring in that film of yours. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, that'd be good. Give me a call. Excellent. Um, yeah, you, honestly, you've just got to start got to start creating. Petch, Lee Petch is like I said before, easy. He's just started creating. Um, how's that going, Petch? I saw you editing some stuff on Twitter today. I think Lucy, who Petch is working with, um, just two actors in the acts on this community decided they were going to get together, shoot some stuff, edit it themselves, put it out there, taking freaking control of their lives. Um, Mark says, with what you on uh, that, Ross, it's good to be doing something creative. With you on that, Ross, <laughs> can't read, Mark. <coughs> It is, isn't it? Create honestly. All of us who basically are creatives, you're just going to get off on being creative. You're going to get frustrated when you're sat there leaving everything to your agent. Um, all right, Gary says started watching the first live broadcast last week. Um, what you watched the first one I ever did last week, Gary? On that, that'll probably be on YouTube still, won't it? I'm gonna have to get it. Sam's in the house. All right, Sam currently writing an eight part drama. She said it's in its treatment stage, but something that's been in my head for a few years now. Eight parts, man. Eight parts, Sam. That I mean, there's again, there's got to be a part in it. <laughs> for all of us in the community um but yeah that's uh that's great wendy says good for you lewis um definitely and I, i've got a good memory 2011 when you started that company paul i knew it absolutely lee says phil barantini's podcast was brilliant kev says i put on a christmas carol produced directed and starred in before christmas uh in order of uh malta homeless outreach and it was a huge a wahoo success uh now doing documentary on homeless a movie of the Christmas Carol by end of 2019. So I keep sharpening my saw. No waiting for phone calls from agents. It works. Nice one, Kev. Kev's always been a bit of a go-getter, though. Good on you, Kev. Tony Rossi's in the house from Chicago. All right, Tony. Hope you're well, man. Um, Tony's a go-getter as well. Um, let us know what you've been doing, Tony. Uh, Andy said, I've started listening to the podcast and watched the film. So emotional. It's good, isn't it? Um, Peter says, I do web series filming monthly in an East End pub, always looking for collaborators. It's called Down the Ellie. There you go. Anyone wants to collab with Peter? Peter Revel Walsh, uh, comment on that in the Facebook comments now, or if you're listening to the replay, or you're watching the replay, Peter's in the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash acts on this TV. And he's got a, a link to Down the Ellie, which is facebook.com forward slash down the Ellie, spell E L L I E. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, get, get cracking. Um, thanks for the kind words, um, Kev. Jay's here. All right, Jay says, an absolute bargain. Get it. It's virtually being given away. Wish I had this info leaving drama school. You mean you mean acts on this? 
So did I. Well, I wish I had it leaving drama school. That's why I created it, Jay, because it's still, after four years of leaving drama school, wasn't there. Um, definitely. God, there's loads. Tolu's here as well. How are you doing? I have a podcast for creatives uh, to collaborate and inspire each other called The Creative Alliance Show. All welcome. So everyone's creating. If you've got anything... Um, yeah, anything you want, uh, you know, me uh, to help you promote anyone who's, you know, you've maybe you've got a web series or um, you've shot a scene or anything like that. Um, always include like me uh, and the site in on Twitter and stuff like that at Act On This TV. Um, the site's got like sixteen thousand followers. I can retweet it for you. You know, lots of people in the industry follow. Um, all the stuff on my list. I've got a list here of things I want to talk about. And by the way, by all means. Um, if you've got anything you want to talk about, this is like a bit of an open session tonight, write in the comments on Facebook here, ask any questions, anything about your career, acting, voiceover, anything about brand building, online stuff, online marketing, websites, anything you think I can help you with, um, please put it in the uh, in the comments on Facebook there. Um, one person I was talking to, so Rob Collier, you know me mate Rob Collier, he played um, Thomas in Downton Abbey. He's just gone into Ackley Bridge. Um, he's filming uh, the latest series of Atley Bridge. Now, he phoned me before, actually. He was talking about creating stuff. Um, he's got an idea for something that he wants us to shoot. Um, so even people, you know, who are working and are quite high up the ladder are still like, look, I've got to take this into my freaking own hands. Some of the most successful people I see in this industry. Um, do you know who really inspires me? Noel Clark. Noel Clark, Ashley Walters, Jimmy Akinbola, uh that little kind of like gang of actors, they, they you know, they're clearly really good friends, um, all create their own stuff. And I mean, Noel and Ashley created Bulletproof. If you saw Bulletproof uh, on Sky, um, it's just been sold around the world now. Um, these guys are like just not waiting for jobs. You know what I saw Noel do today that was a class act? Some poor student in London I'd had someone drop out of a short film. I think she was like a final year filmmaker or something like that at a university in London. And she put a tweet out today saying, listen, um, I know it's really short notice, but I'm looking for an actor um, to step in, you know, to this role. I think the shoot's next week. Oh no, 11th of March. I think she, she put the shoot was um, looking for actors who might be interested. Um, Noel uh, quote tweeted her tweet going i'll do it if it, if you know if it um if it matches my dates i'll do it where's the script how long we're shooting for <laughs> i just thought man i mean that that's giving back you know the guy's so successful it's like yeah i'll do a student film for free um that's what i love that's what i like seeing absolutely uh just a class act um lee says i also run a theater company and we'll be putting a casting call out uh, for around nine parts in the next couple of weeks. You can find out more on our Facebook page, Off The Cuff Theatre Company. We're getting them all, all out tonight. Wendy says a few of us from the London meetup are filming a web series next month. It all came from a comment that Blake made one day. Blake's in the Access community. Shout out to you, Blake. Um, Kevin says, I'm happy to share how doing your course did help me, among other things. So yeah, so, so Kev was a legend. Kev did Bulletproof Actor. Talking about Bulletproof, it ties in, doesn't it? Um, I do a course called Bulletproof Actor. It's an entire... Um, Super in-depth, like, positive psychology program. I only launch it once a year. I take a group of people through it very intimately. There's a, a small group of, like, you know, I don't know, any, anywhere, up to 50 of us online. Uh, we go through it over five weeks. Some of the live calls we do are literally five or six hours. Uh, but, yeah, Kev was, uh, Kev was on that. And that's all about, you know, taking control back of your life, not allowing circumstances to rule you, not allowing your emotions to rule you. You rule your emotions as an actor. Very important. Um and Kev, yeah, man, it was amazing to see the transformation in you, dude. And now you're just out there smashing it. So uh, so it's great. It says, you really lead by example and give sense uh, community. Happy to chat. Thanks, Kev. Appreciate that. Um, and Sam saw Noel's tweet. Saw it. Noel's a top man offering it. Good, isn't it? Definitely. Honestly, really, uh, really, really good. But talk, going back to Rob Collier, um, yeah, he's in Ackley Bridge at the moment. Um, I think I'm going to do a he's, got a... he's got an apartment while he's filming Ackley Bridge over in Hebden Bridge. Uh, near where it's filmed in Halifax, and I bought some new kit. What do you reckon about this, right? I'm going to, rather than doing podcasts that are one on one, what do you reckon to me producing some round table podcasts with like, so this would be meet the cast of Ackley Bridge, and then we would do meet the cast of whatever, and we would bring on, I can bring on up to three guests with this new kit that I've got. Um, so it would be like a round table, there'd be four of us. I'd sort of start the chat off, and what I like about that is like, they then just riff among themselves about everything. It just becomes a lot more, I guess, conversational as opposed to interviewee. Um, 
I like the way the Hollywood Reporter do their kind of they do they do video interviews as a round table with like I mean mega stars though they have like the actors and it's like um you know Leonardo DiCaprio Tom Hanks or whatever um huge names that act on this will get one day I'm just I just need your help <laughs> need your help to get there um, but yeah what do you think about that I think that would be quite interesting because if you because if you if you like the idea of that I can probably do one of them next week we can do the cast of Ackley Bridge um anyone ever been in Ackley Bridge it's cast by Beverly Keogh David Martin at Beverly Keogh um cast uh, cast Ackley Bridge it's all done now obviously for this uh, this series I'm guessing it'll go again, though. It's one of those shows, I think, that just seems to go again and again. Bobby Calloway's here from Ireland. All right, Bobby says he's finally here. Hope you're well. Wendy says, love it. Gemma says, that would be wicked, Ross. That would be great, says Peter. Yes, that would be fab. Getting them all bouncing their perspectives. Good idea. Well, it's, just, it's, it's just a surefire hit then, isn't it? Mark says, yeah, great idea. Go for it. Lee says, good idea. Right, well, we're going to do that. I'm going to FaceTime Rob in a minute. Um, well, not in a minute. Obviously, I'm doing this, um, but I will let him know. And that's what we're going to do, definitely, which is uh, which is good. Um, Another another podcast that I've already recorded that I'm going to be putting out uh, on ads on this next week is um, you know I shot a scene with Chris Stone Stone last week I played it on last week's broadcast that one called Ex Girlfriend the one where I'm breaking up with that, that girl and I like get into a bit of an emotional state um, Freya Lund was the actress fantastic actress um, I started talking to Chris and you know we've done me and Chris have done something called show real surgery multiple times and you'll find that on YouTube if you go to YouTube. Um, dot com forward slash act on this tv and just search the channel for hashtag show real surgery all one word you'll find multiple episodes we did of that and that was where we would literally play people's show reels out live like on a broadcast like this exactly like this actually um and then chris is without a doubt the country's just best show reel producer in my opinion um he films scenes from scratch and edits people's show reels he's done mine for years now um wouldn't have anybody else doing it um, I was like, Chris, you know what? Although we've done all those things, we haven't actually put anything together, a resource for you guys that is a, like a definitive step-by-step guide to exactly what your reel needs to be formulaically almost to go, this would, if you follow these seven steps, ultimately, that's what we broke it down to, you will have a super solid reel. And it goes through all of the things that can really screw your reel up. And all of the things that I probably send out in about six emails a week to people when they message me going, will you look at my reel? Um, and I end up having to write the same email out probably five or six times a week. And I'm like, God, I'm spending so much time writing this same email out. I should just have it somewhere to copy and paste. But I thought, no, what's better than that is to have a podcast that I can just send people to. So go, if you just listen to this, take these seven steps in, your reel will be like on fire. Um, so that's coming out on uh, on Monday. If you're a premium member of Ats on This, you will get access to that. Again, if you're not a premium member, go to atsonthis.tv forward slash seven days. Sign up, get a seven-day trial for free. Um, Bobby says, listen to half the one with Phil this morning. So with Phil Beastle, what do you think, Bobby? What do you think of that podcast so far? You've got a big smiley face. Let me know what you uh, what you like. Gary says he loves round tables. Sharon says, awesome idea on the round table as well. Um, so that's fantastic. That's good. A um, couple of other points that I've got to raise, but... I feel it's all been about me tonight and I've just been like, this is supposed to be about you guys as well. So what, um, what, give me some questions on here. Let me know what you, uh, what you might need some help with. Uh, John says, I saw your real clip, Ross, not just the one you showed last week, but it was great. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, mate. Yeah, Michelle, so, I mean, yeah, you probably saw it on Twitter. And um, that's something, that's just one of the steps we go through in, um, in this podcast with Chris is like, actually, you know what? A lot of people still don't know how to distribute their show reel. They have it and it sits on their hard drive and they don't actually know how to put it out there. We go through every place you should have your reel. One of those places and the place that I distribute mine the most is absolutely Twitter. Um, if your reel is under two minutes and 20 seconds, you can upload it natively as a video to Twitter without linking it to YouTube or Vimeo. We highly recommend you do that. Um, and then you want to pin your reel to the top of your profile and you can do that by clicking in the top right hand corner of your tweet and clicking pin to profile that means that it stays at the top of your profile and every tweet you make after that doesn't push it further down your timeline so if you follow people on twitter how many times you've been followed on twitter by someone you're like oh, okay who's this guy and you go and check who they are people do that to you as well when you follow someone you might follow a casting director and they go oh, okay you know who's angie and angie johnson um, although that's a pseudonym, um, who's John Moody, you know, who's Bobby Calloway, they'll go to your profile and 
you really want your showreel to be the first thing that they see on your profile because they've just got that one opportunity to maybe look at it that you wouldn't get otherwise. Um, so that's just one of the things that we talk about in that podcast. But you probably saw my uh, my reel on Twitter, John, maybe. Um, that's generally where uh, I put it out the most. Um, Sharon said that would be a fantastic help. It's really good. And do you know what? We're brutal, Sharon, as well. Well, Chris is. I'm brutal anyway, but Chris is like really, really brutal because he probably shoots, I think the stats were something like, he's done about 800 reels in the last two years. Um so he really knows what he's talking about. Uh, Anne Marie's here, right? Uh, Anne Marie, hi Ross. Chris Stone is great. Yeah, this is my show reel for me, and he gives such good advice. Nice one, little testimonial for Chris there. Uh, Chris, is, Chris is editing my show reel now. So look at this, all the Chris Stone fans in the house. Um, Tony says, "Hey, hey, Ross and UK friends, all right." Tony Rossi, hey, hey, you're my only Chicago friend, Tony. I don't have anyone else. Um, so thanks for being here, mate. Um, Sharon said, I love the location used on that show reel. It really worked. For the scene, yeah, we just sat at the top of a hill. Um, we cheated it, actually. I let into a secret. So on that on that reel, if you go on that scene, if you go to, uh, if you just Google Chris Stone Vimeo, you can go to his, his Vimeo channel and just the one that I'm in is called Ex-Girlfriend. Um, that was actually, we, we cheated it a bit. We were sat at the top of this hill uh, and we were pretending that we were looking out to this vista, this 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 scenery that you see behind us. Uh, well, actually, just in front of us was just a concrete playground. The view, the view behind us is beautiful. The view in front of us was nothing. <laughs> it was terrible. I remember it kind of looked like we're just dreamy and staring out into uh, into this amazing scenery that just wasn't there. But I guess that's acting, Sharon. But um, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, you watching it and, and saying such nice things. Um, Bobby says very inspiring as always, especially when it comes to creating content and putting it out there. My film Aaron is nowhere near as good as Love Is a Gift. But it ended up getting what? Yeah, man. So yeah, you put your uh, Bobby did a short film called Aaron that got one hundred and forty thousand views um, on YouTube. You know, so I mean, that's you know, that's not to be sniffed at that Bobby. I've not had a video this. I did some actually. You know what? The only video I've got that's done anywhere near that is um, when we shot some a Downton Abbey spoof called Downton Wars with the real cast from Downton Abbey. Um, Rob Collier shot it on his iPhone. Um, and I edited it all together for charity, and I got about half a million hits, I think, or something like that. But that was Downton Abbey, man. You know, it's 140,000. It's not bad, Bobby, at all, mate. Um, definitely. And Marie says she's pinned her showreel, as uh, as Chris suggested on Twitter. Good, good, good. Excellent. And Tony's tuning in from Boston today. There you go. Bloody hell. Got Boston. We've got Rich in Miami or Florida or something like that. Um. One other thing I've mentioned for a while that I am now going to be launching very soon, and I just want to see what the... This is for premium members again on ads.onthis.tv. If you're not a premium member, you might want to be after you hear this because this is a way for you to help me grow the community and also get your membership for free and not just that, actually earn some decent revenue as well. I've been thinking about it for a while. I was like, you know what? The best way for me to grow this community is to give obviously insane value to people give as many you know as just as much this is why i do these for free or you know i go live in the facebook group we've got the facebook group you know there's so much stuff that i'm just like look i just want to contribute to the to the industry um and obviously that grows the community because people get value from that and they want to be a part of that and we are really i genuinely believe we're creating a movement here of some special actors who are like motivated inspired and are really taking control of their lives and their careers they're not just waiting getting frustrated and hating on everybody um but I thought, you know what, what better than than that would be to reward those people who are already invested in the community and are already premium members of the community um, with some extra incentives ultimately to spread the good word about the site. And I know a lot of people do that anyway, and I'm massively appreciative of all those people who I see tweeting and recommending the site to other people, and they tell their friends in acting class and people they work with and stuff. But I was like, you know what, I can do better than that. Um I want to ultimately start a scheme. And it's an affiliate scheme. I spoke about it many times before, but I'm completely clear on it now. I shot a video about it, actually, that I'm going to put out next week. Um, and I think in March, this is when this is finally going to start in about a week or two weeks' time. And basically, anyone who's a premium member of Act On This, it's called Act On This for free, the number four free, okay? If you basically, what you do is you can sign up as an affiliate only if you're a premium member. This is only for the premium members. Um but if you sign up as a, as a premium member, you get an affiliate link now, well, you will do in a couple of weeks. You can give that link out and you can't spam it, please. You know, this is not about going into Facebook groups and just freaking spamming your link everywhere, hoping people can click on it. This is you literally going, okay, you know what? 
I have these friends in my my community, you know, or you know, on my email list, or you know, whatever, just people you have on Facebook as your friends who happen to be actors. You can give them your link if they sign up through your link, and you bring four people to the party, you get your membership completely free. So you can stop there if you want and go. You know what? I'm just going to bring four people into the community, and then I'll never pay for my membership again. Um, or well, you well basically you'll never pay for membership again as long as they're members. If they just cancel after one month, then you don't get the commission from their memberships. But basically, you get 25% commission from any signups you get. Thus, if you sign up four people, the commission will equal your membership fee. Um, but it doesn't stop there. You can literally sign up as many people as you want, and you will get 25% of everything on a recurring basis. So if they sign up for a monthly membership at a tenner a month, you'll get £2.50 a month from every membership. If they sign up for a yearly membership at 90 quid a year, you'll get, what will that be, £22.50 every single year. As long as they remember, you get that again and again and again. I hate those schemes that you get where like you get paid once. I'm like, well, that's not very really fair, that. If you've brought somebody to the... Um, to the party, you know, then uh, I want to reward you for that as long as, you know, they're uh, they're a member of the site. Um, so just let me know if that's something that you, I mean, I've, I've mentioned it before, but let me know if you think that's something that you'd be interested in. It's not like, you know, it's not some dodgy pyramid scheme or anything weird like that. Um, I don't want people to become a nuisance by, like, like I say, just slamming their link everywhere. If I see people doing that or if I see people try to game the system by going, right, you know what, get three of my friends who are already members to cancel, I'll introduce them so that I get their commitment. You know, we're not playing, we're not mucking about and like playing silly games, none of that. It's just genuinely for people who like are fans of the site, are getting value from the site, um, are happy to talk about it, spread the word, and I want to ultimately pay for it. Because I'm like, you know what? Uh, that money you could earn could mean you might be able to take a day off your part-time job or something like that that you can actually then put into creating something for yourself that could just change the trajectory of your career. Um, but I just want to blow this site up, like in this community. Just want to make it like I was saying today. I put a tweet out because you know a lot of the membership fees as well go to charity. So Phil, who did a podcast with us this week, we've spoken about. He got a charity donation to a charity who he's an ambassador for called the Guff, the Good Grief Trust. It's about bereavement. Um, I put a slightly loaded tweet out today saying, you know what's the best thing about being a member of Rats on this? Um, your money doesn't get pocketed by a fat cat or a failed actor who is promising you success they never had. Because you know what? I'm getting tired, man, of seeing actors who are clearly not earning enough money out of their own career, um, that they're setting things up, and they're just robbing other vulnerable actors of money, promising them success, acting classes and stuff, promising them success that they haven't had themselves. And I'm like, mate, like, listen, I hate it. I hate it. Like, you can't, and I say this all the time, do your due diligence before you do anything. Before you sign up to Acts on This, if you're brand new to this, if you're listening on the Acts, uh, the Acts on This TV audio experience, you've no clue I, who I am or anyone in this industry, um, do some research. Just Google me, Ross Grant. Go on my IMDb. Look at what I'm working on. Look at what I've worked on. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I don't really give out that much advice. I bring guests onto the site who are super, super successful. I just curate it all, but still... Do some checks, man. Don't give anyone your money, regardless. Even if it's like, like that's honest, it's ten or a month. You know, two pound fifty a week. Don't give anyone even two pound fifty a week without actually looking at who the person is who's heading this thing up. Because I'm just seeing people who I'm like, man, you've done nothing. How on earth can you promise people this success that they're going to have by coming to your acting class or your master class that's eighty five quid or even more? You know, for one session. I mean, that takes the piss. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are charging sometimes hundreds of pounds for like a day. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, it's, that's just not, it's just not right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't really know what my point was there. I was just, I was just saying uh, that it's, that, oh, yeah, that's all it's, it's legit um, in terms of it's a force for good, you know. And, uh, and if you can bring people to the party through this affiliate scheme, I want to reward you as well. Uh, Wendy says, it's a great idea. I'm always telling people about the site. Well, Wendy, hopefully you'll be the number one affiliate. Uh, if we're looking to join premium, can we post in Act on this and ask if someone has a referral link so they can get the credit? Ah, well, you know what? I mean, it's a dodgy one, isn't it, Tony? Because you might end up just getting... <laughs> if you were looking to join or someone was looking to join and then they posted in the Act on this group going, right, I want to join through someone's link. I mean, I guess it'd be first to the party. I'm not adverse to that, to be honest, but I don't want it to be a... Uh, I just don't want it to look spammy. That's the only thing that, that why I've held off this for a bit. I'm like, how can I do it in a classy way? 
so that it doesn't look like the last thing I want is like it's some it's a look like some cheap kind of like oh you know like I want people to talk about it and and um recommend it because they want to recommend it ultimately the the commission they would get is like a bonus um I don't want them to go right I just want to recommend it to make money off it um I mean I guess that's all right I don't I mean it's difficult to police in it it's difficult to police but yeah we'll we'll see how it uh how it goes Jay says I do it for free Ross well thank you Jay um but if you know I just want to reward everyone like I said I feel that this is our community it's not it, it's never been you know what it was never even meant to be a business that's on this um ever it was like a bit of a hobby of mine it just blew up into something way bigger than I thought it would do um and now it's becoming something wait I mean it, you know it's just about coming to the point where for the first year in 11 years it's becoming slightly profitable in terms of I can buy extra kit until this year, I'll let you. Well, I'll be completely transparent. You know, until this year, I set this site up in 2011. Um, until this year, you can go and look at my accounts on Companies Hours if you want. Um, ads on this owed me over twenty thousand pounds. Wasn't making any money from it, but that's because well, it comes back to what I was saying before. Thankfully, I'm so grateful. I'm earning enough in my own acting career that I can fund that on this through that. It's not like these actors who set up these acting schools because they can't earn any money out of their acting career because they're doing fuck all. So they go, oh, you know, one way I can make money because my career's so shit because I'm just not working hard enough. Um, I'll just go and take money off all these actors. That'll be a lot easier. Um, yeah, it's owed me a lot of money until this year. So, uh, so yeah, going forward, I'm like, look, how can we blow it up? And you know what I would want to do? If we get to the point where it's making some serious revenue, I've said this before, um, I would want to commission films um, and content that I can give people in the community who contribute the most, and I don't mean money, I mean who contribute the most value by being there in the community, by talking to people, by offering advice to people in the in the private community we've got on Acts on this TV or in the public community on Facebook. Um, you know, I would I would want to give those people roles in films and things that I would be creating via revenue from the site. That will be the dream. We've got a bit to go <laughs> until until we get to that point. But that would be amazing because then we're, you know, we're completely taking control of uh, of what's going on whilst building an amazing, you know, an amazing community that's really having an impact. Um, Bobby says, I discovered an actress who would probably be your ideal woman, Ross. Her name is Poppy Drayton. Who is this woman you talk about? And then Wendy's put, does she look like Kate Middleton? Brilliant. Brilliant. I hope she does, Wendy. Kate Middleton was definitely my ideal woman before she uh, became the wife of uh of prince william who william if you're watching is a top bloke never met him but ruth madeley met him you know you know ruth madeley the actress i was in don't take my baby with i went for a coffee with her in the Trafford center and whilst we were there she got an invite to kensington palace through bafta um didn't know prince william was going to be there and um, for this evening and she said to me oh my boyfriend doesn't go to things like this he's not really into it um do you want to come and i was like yeah I'll go. But then I think something came up where I was like, I need to check you because know, I might have had this job. I think I had a voiceover job the, the early the morning after. So um, anyway, I didn't go. And the next day on Instagram, I saw her. I think a mum went with her in the end. I saw her with Prince William in Kensington Palace shaking hands. I was like, oh my God. Miss an opportunity there, haven't I? But if you get if you get awarded through BAFTA or you get a nomination or you, you become like one of their breakthrough Brits or one of their rising stars... Get very well looked after, and uh, Prince William's like one of the patrons, isn't he, of BAFTA? So, getting with the royal family, get a bit of cash there. We could all create some films there. Um, so, yeah, that's what I missed out. Uh, what else have we got? Bobby says, It's changed my life. I think I'd have to give you my firstborn to fully repay you. Sadly, I've never reproduced it. What do you mean, Bobby? <laughs> well, acts on this has changed your life. If it has, Bobby, I mean, that I'm so grateful, mate, that you, you've embraced it like that. Um, Andy says, definitely got a few people in mind who would benefit from acts on this. Well, yeah, Andy, definitely. Um, and like I say, I'll be all premium members. I'll be emailing out on the email list to all premium members to let you know how you sign up for this. Um, it's, it, you don't log in through the same way you log into your premium membership. You will be logging into a slightly different portal on the same website, though, um, on acts on this.tv. But you will have to sign up separately. It's just so I can keep track of everything. Um, and then the commissions, it's all manual, unfortunately. There's no way to automate this, so it might take a little bit of time. But um, the commissions will be paid through PayPal once a month. 
So at the end of the month, you will all get paid. Um, so you will need a PayPal account to get paid as well. So if you've not got a PayPal account yet, which is completely free, you just tie it to your email address. Um, doesn't have to be the same email address as that you sign up to the site with. It would help if it was, but it doesn't have to be. Um, then that's how you will get paid for promoting the uh, promoting the website. Um, awesome. Um, last thing on my list to talk about tonight before we start wrapping up is this Saturday. Um, if you're listening on the audio experience, it will be ooh, it's going to go out tomorrow, so you've got a couple of days. But Saturday, the second of March, it is again the acts on this TV meetups in London and Manchester. So I run the Manchester one. Wendy, Wendy's on here. Wendy runs the London one with Mel Radcliffe, uh, not Radcliffe, Rad Radloff, Radcliffe. That's someone I used to go to school with, Mel Radcliffe, Mel Radloff. Um, Wendy and Mel run it. Wendy, you bake any cookies for the London lot this Saturday or what? Um, and I got your email, Wendy. I'm going to send you some money um, to at least get you and Mel some coffees. I appreciate you like hosting the the meetup for so long. And now, like I said, now that now finally the site's got a little bit of money. So I don't for a minute think it's making loads of money. Um, it's got a little bit of spare every month. I can send you some money for coffee uh, for you and Mel and some cake, Wendy. So uh, I will do that. I'll sort that out this week for you. But yeah, 11 a.m. Um... In Manchester at Home Theatre, um, that'll be me hosting that one, Saturday 2nd of March. Come along. If you've never been to one before, please come. Don't be scared. It's so chilled. We get coffee. We have cake. We go around the table. We ask people what where they're at in their career, where they want to be in their career this time next month, how we can all help you get there. We share contact details of people in the industry. We put people in touch with people. We, you know, vet and, well, vet, but like, you know, critique people's showreels or we can help you with headshots. Super collaborative. Um, I'm sure the London lot do exactly the same. Uh, Wendy says, of course, she's making cookies. So that's amazing. So if you go to the London one, that's a Benugo bar, BFI South Bank, uh, British Film Institute at South Bank, uh, Benugo bar there. Wendy will welcome you with open arms. Uh, so will Mel. And they'll even give you cookies. And Wendy's cookies are an absolute freaking treat. Um, Lee Martin uh, says he'll be there at Manchester. So, yeah, same time in London, 11 a.m. We normally wrap up in Manchester. Do you know what? It's supposed to be like one. But we never wrap up at one. Um, no, no, 11 till 2, innit? Normally. But we normally go at like 4 o'clock, to be honest. Depending on what's going on, how many people turn up, we just end up chatting and chatting and chatting. Um, but you can just drop in. Drop in for a bit. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. Um, but please, yeah, get yourself, uh, get yourself along. We'd just love to meet more people um, in real life. And I mean, just in general. <laughs> I've got no friends. Um, Bobby says, I usually add any Irish actors I meet to the group. Can't guarantee they'll join the site, though. No, Bobby, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, just get people into the community in, in general. It's just lovely having people to broadcast to. People don't even need to join the site. I think if, you, I think if you're an actor and you haven't joined the site, genuinely, this isn't promo. I swear to God, I hate salesy stuff, and I'm not selling. The info... The, do you know what? The whole point of me setting up acts on this, like, back in 2011, to be completely honest with you, I'm sure I said this lots of times before, um was for me to widen my network. I was like, how can I get out there and actually like spread some good, make an impact and meet more people? And I thought, you know what? I love talking to people in the industry. Well, why don't I record these chats? And then not only do I benefit from the chat, but then, you know, potentially thousands of other actors can benefit from the chat. That was the whole point behind it. And all I have done since 2011, I really mean this, like I, I don't head up acts on this as in going, I'm, look at me, I'm so great. I have all the answers because I haven't got any answers, right? Really haven't. I'm completely blagging my way through this industry just as much as you lot are. And we all are. Let's just be completely honest, right? None of us truly have it all figured out. No one, no matter where they're at in their career, has it truly figured out. Um, but I am acting on, that's why it's called Acts on This, I am acting on all of the information these casting directors and agents and writers and producers and directors are giving me in these podcasts. I'm not recording these podcasts with these people already knowing this information that's coming out of their mouths you know we haven't done this before these are all podcasts i record like you know with the person once and um, sometimes i'll get them back on for another one and we'll update it that's happening right now there's quite a lot of updates going on so you're going to see some of the ones that are on there already with certain guests being removed and a new one going on an updated version of it effectively um but what i do is i myself act on this information and over the years I've become more and more successful, not because of anything extraordinary about me, just because I've been taking action on everything that's in these podcasts. Um, it works. Seriously. It's not like I'm recording these podcasts and then I'm, I've got other information that I'm doing stuff with on my own. 
I'm getting it off these people who I interview. So ultimately, if you're an actor and you're not listening to this stuff, you're depriving yourself of critical information that is working in my own career. I know it works because I'm doing it. I just shot a brand new drama on Sunday night with a night shoot. I finished at 4 a.m. Um, for something called Years and Years, a brand new Russell T. Davis drama. I play a guy called Billy Fritz in that. An incredible drama. Um, the work, All the work that I've done basically has is, is come from the information that I've had in these interviews since 2011. And we're talking 21 television jobs. Um, I know there's people who are still after their first TV credit right now. Um, and I've not had 21 because I'm amazing and, and there's something extraordinary about me. You know, I think I've got ability and I'm good, but I can tell you it's not been the ability like necessarily in the first instance that's got me in the room. It's by listening to these podcasts and taking action on the business side of things that is shared in these podcasts. Um, so you definitely should be a part of it, honestly. And that isn't a sales thing. Like, just I know sometimes you're like, oh God, I've got to sit there and listen to this thing for an hour and a half. But I'm asking you just to listen. I mean, I don't know how else without doing it for you, I can supply you with this information. Like, And if you listen like I do, I always have podcasts in my ears. Um, not my own, I'm not that egotistical. Um, but from other people um, in various niches and from different places around the world. Um, and I take them in when I'm on trains, when I'm you know traveling somewhere or I'm sat in Costa just having a 20 minute break and a coffee uh, or while I'm, I've got major OCD, I think. <laughs> I had to mop all the uh, apartment today because I didn't do it on Sunday because I was filming. Um, I thought, right, I've got like two hours of tidying up now. Let's get some podcasts on. Um, they're so good. That's why I started doing more audio than video because they're so good to take in whilst doing something else. Um, so uh, so just listen, ultimately, just listen. Um, Corinne's here. All right, Corinne, how are you doing? Or Corinne, the, your name was in a drama I was reading in at yesterday. And everyone was saying the name different ways. Some people were saying Corinne. Some were saying Corinne. Some were saying Corinne. How do you say phonetically, if you could spell it for me in a Facebook comment, how do you say your name? Because every single person was saying it differently at the read-through. And it's for a major drama on Netflix. So I was like, that's something they need to iron out. Everyone needs to be saying the name the same. How do you say it? Corinne, Corinne. It's not Corinne, is it? Because Corinne's like the male version, I think. Let us know. Um, Andy says, I'll be in Sheffield this weekend visiting my mum. 83 years young. I'll see if I can make it to Manchester. Amazing, Angie. Bring your mum. 83. She'd bloody love it. Um, Bobby says, I got my first TV credit without even knowing it was going to be on TV. <laughs> I hope that wasn't some sort of uh, crime watch CCTV footage, Bobby. Um, definitely. Let us know what that, uh, what that was on. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all my points for kind of this week. What time is it? It's bang on ten o'clock, isn't it? So we've gone for a uh, gone for an hour. If you've got anything uh, you wanna you wanna add, get it in the Facebook comments now. Um, if not, for those who are just joining us, I'll play that little clip from Phil Beastle's podcast that went up on Ads on This TV this week. A fantastic in depth chat with Phil, who's a director whose film Love Is a Gift absolutely blew up over Christmas. It went completely viral. It's a fantastic short film, Christmas message. Um, and over 70 million people ended up watching it. But that was a film that he put out in 2014 and no one really watched it. He put it out in 2015 and no one nearly watched it. 16, 17, nearly gave up on it in 18, put it out and bang. Trajectory of his career changed forever. Life changed forever. It's a fantastic lesson to stay in the game, keep pushing forward. Um, and ultimately, what else would you do? You know what? If you quit and you quit acting... Really, what else would you do? Because let's face it, it's crossed all of our minds. And me multiple times, you know. I'll be completely honest with you. Lots of times, half a dozen times over my life probably, I've gone, do you know what? My life would be so much easier and way less stressful if I just did a normal job. And I just can't. I just can't. And then I do a job like years and years on Sunday and I come away and it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm not tired. We've just done a shoot from, my call time was four in the afternoon. We've done a 12-hour shoot from four in the afternoon till four o'clock in the morning and I'm buzzing, and I'm like, this is why I'm doing it, because it just, it touches something inside me that nothing else can, and I can't even tell you what it is, I don't even know exactly what it is, but there's something about it that just gives me a, a, a buzz that nothing else, nothing else can touch, um, so for me, it's like, there's no alternative, I just, I just have to do it, and if I have to be patient another 15 years before, you know, anything really big happens, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hang in there, because you just don't know, like with Phil, 
when that day might come. And if you've been creating something recently and maybe you created it a couple of years ago and you've been putting it out the last couple of years and nothing's happened, dig it back out, put it out again. You know, you don't know what's going to, uh, what's going to happen. Um, Bobby says, although my second CV credit was indeed on crime call. I robbed a bank in broad daylight. <laughs> Corey says it's hard to spell phonetically. Corinne. I think that's what you're saying, isn't it? Corinne. Corinne. That's how I would say it. Not Corinne. Um, it's always 11 a.m. at Benugo Bar, BFI South Bank, says Wendy. Um, next to the National Theatre, first Saturday every month. Ross always reminds people on their Facebook page. Yeah, and I don't know if I've created it on facebook.com forward slash acts on this TV in the events section. If not, I'm going to do that straight after this uh, this broadcast finishes. Um, definitely. And uh, Corinne says, never tired when you love what you do. Yeah, that was it. Just like we were just totally buzzing. It's like that we're writing, says Gary. It's your true calling, Ross. I think it is, Gary, honestly. I don't know what... You know what? Presenting, I get the same kind of buzz, but... Acting, acting is just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And you know what? I had a really interesting conversation with my agent yesterday. She wanted to put me forward for something at the, uh, the I think it was at the National, actually. I haven't done any theatre since leaving drama school because I struggle with theatre a bit because of my eye condition. I've got an eye condition that basically renders me with very little peripheral vision and no night vision at all, really. So when it's in a blackout, I can't see anything. Even if the blue light's on in theatre, it just makes it very awkward and, and I get very... Um, I feel a bit vulnerable. I get very hung up on where I'm going to be at the end of a scene and how I'm going to get off stage. And I focus on that a lot of the time more than actually my performance and it becomes a chore. So I just haven't enjoyed theatre. Telly's very, very different because I can get very used to the set um, and you can have a, you know, you screw it up once, you can have another go at it. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's a lot more forgiving. Um, but I had to have a really honest conversation with my agent yesterday. I went into a lot of depth about my eye condition, my thoughts on theatre and everything like that. Um, and it was amazing. We both had a really great chat and it was just so lovely to be completely, utterly open and honest and say, listen, because my eye condition is degenerative as well. This would have been a five month uh, commitment to this thing if I'd have gone for it and got it. And I was like, for me, that's dead. That's like donating five months of my eyesight to something that actually I'm not that passionate about. And she totally got it and was amazing. Um, and it felt really great to say no to something not you know a lot of people will say yes to please their agent they'll go to every audition to please their agent and lots of people will say to me god i was in the car and i was going why am i even going to this i'm kicking myself i don't even want to do it um it was just a real lesson to me that like honesty is always the best policy um you're going to be dead a lot longer than you're alive be really like honest with yourself and choose like what you want to do with with every minute effectively um yeah, just a little little message to end on it. It was just nice to actually go, you know what, oh, I can be completely open and honest. And you need that relationship with your agent where you can be like that as opposed to being afraid. So many actors are afraid of their agent. I'm like, it's just not a good uh, not a good relationship, that at all. Um, awesome. Right, well, I'll play this little clip by Phil again. Just a little uh, a little 60-second clip. If you want to listen to the full podcast, that's on this .tv. I'm just going to close Facebook down a second, so apologies that I can't see any more comments. If there's anything urgent, you can always email me, ross at actsonthis.tv. Um, that comes straight through to me, by the way. Um, someone that messaged me the other day going, hi, team, could you pass this on to your team? I was like, I freaking wish I had a team. Um, it's just me. If you email Acts on This or you get any emails from Acts on This, um, bar like a couple of automated ones, like um, if your credit card fails or something like that, you get some automated ones to just you know update you. I don't, I don't, go, I don't watch your account in that much depth. Um, but everything else you get, um, is from me, guys. There is no team. So if you email Ross at on this TV, it doesn't get vetted by anyone. Um, it sits in my inbox. I get a notification on my phone, so you've emailed me. And I promise you, um, the second I can get to it, sometimes it might take me a week to get back to you, but I will I get back to everybody. A lot of the time I start my emails off with, um, really sorry, this is, <laughs> this, this is such a late reply. Um, but I will. People on here will probably vouch for me if you've emailed me. I will always get back to people. Um, same if you message me on social media or something like that. Um, so I can't see your comments right now, but if there's anything, a burning desire or something urgent, um, please uh, you know, please leave it in an, in an email for me. There is as well. I'll just show you very quickly uh, on actsonthis.tv. I don't know if you're, if you're aware. If you're a premium member now as well, um, oh, I have to log in. Let me just try and log in quick. Uh is that me? Let me have a look. I'm just going to try and log in. Yeah. When you go to the members area now, 
Um, there's not just your premium membership where you get access to all the podcasts, all the podcasts and video interviews and live broadcast replays and everything. The hundreds of hours worth of incredible info is in this section. Um, but if you click on members at the top and you go back to where you log in, your memberships, you'll see that acts on this premium community now as well. And this is a private community we've got away from Facebook just for premium members. Um, it's where you can be a little bit more discreet if you want to talk about stuff and get support on things in your acting career that are you know, a bit more sensitive. Maybe you're talking about moving agents or you're talking about something that you don't want to put out there publicly on Facebook. Um, it's a super vibrant community. I won't stop on any of these uh these topics so people can't read what people are putting uh, but yeah it's a super vibrant community lots of uh, posts going in there i set challenges in there on a weekly basis as well for people to get out there and make stuff happen in their careers um, it's another reason you want to get yourself a free trial if you've not signed up already at on this tv forward slash seven days go get one completely for free for seven days um right i can't see any more comments so i'm gonna love you and leave you um, thanks for turning up on a, on a Tuesday. I know we normally do this on a Monday night. Um, I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate every single last one of you. I know you choose to spend this time with me. It's late. It's gone 10 o'clock. Most people are going to want to go to bed, apart from Tony Rossi, who's in Boston. It's probably afternoon. Um, but yeah, if you do anything for you, please let me know. Ultimately, create more. Take control of your freaking career. Don't ask permission. You don't need permission from anybody to create something, to go out and film something, to film a one-minute scene to put on Instagram. It doesn't have to be big. Just start. So I'll leave you with these words of wisdom from Phil again. If you want to watch the... Not watch. If you want to listen to the uh, full podcast, that's on this.tv, get a premium membership, and um, you can listen to the whole hour-and-a-half chat along with hundreds of hours more. Until next Monday, big love to you all. Until then, bye for now. Just keep trying. I know it really will feel like you're you're struggling um and and sometimes you just want to pack it in but just just keep reminding yourself of why you're doing it why did you first decide to get into this and probably you'll realize it's because it's just something that you feel you have to do but you just can't help but do it but mostly it, i would just stress how important it is to have a good attitude but i would say that someone could have the best show role in the world but if they are a dick to work yeah. with then <laughs> i won't work with them simply that but actually if i was to someone had no cv at all but had the best attitude i feel that i could develop them and would want to work with them especially in the film industry it's, it's such a great community you end up being lumped with 50 people without knowing them at all sometimes yeah and you've got to get on you don't want to be remembered as the one that made it difficult for everybody else